What it is, YouTube, it's your boy Bob Scope. We'll be back at it again. This time, I'm going to do something a bit different. I love science, I love technology. So we're gonna discuss the powers of Superman and how they actually work. So we all know Superman, he's got his, his uh, laser vision, his x-ray vision, his super speed, his super strength, his super breath, his super hearing, his super pooping, his super knuckle cracking, you know, who knows what else he can do, super pee, all the time. But the real question I always had thinking about Superman was how his powers actually work. So let's go back to the beginning. So we all know that Superman was born on the planet Krypton. Kryptonian planet, it orbits a red sun on red giant, rather. And on the planet, nobody has superpowers. And so then, whatever, these comics now, still the same thing. Krypton was dead, exploded. Jor-El and his wife man off of Krypton, him, who out in the universe to wherever they can actually see some planet with a bunch of, of primitive creatures, knuckle draggers, that had goes what on it. And they decide to say he'll be safe on his beautiful one, all these abilities and yada, yada, yada. And then he gets sent to this beautiful wet planet that we call Earth. And he's picked up by John and Martha Kent. So John and Martha Kent is like, ooh, Sky Baby, dibs. They pick up uh, him. What do we name him? We'll call him Clark. He looks like a Clark, even though he fell from the sky. And so he gets in this hick town and then he comes what we actually know as Superman eventually. So what we're always told about Superman's powers is, well, not just Superman, just all Kryptonians in general. They get their powers from the yellow sun. The yellow sun gives them all of their powers that they come and claim to be yada, yada, yada. And to be honest, it never made sense because a star is a star to be. Most of it didn't make sense. Now, what's the difference between a red sun and a yellow sun? And we should all know the truth by now that our sun that everybody says is yellow is not really yellow. It's yellow because of reasons that I have, I'll explain later. Our sun is actually white. It's always been white. It's never been yellow. It only looks yellow because of uh, atmosphere and stuff in our atmosphere. But there is a very big key. And actually, I'm a reference man of steel. Don't at me. I understand. But there's something Jorel said specifically in that movie that makes sense. And it'll all make sense where he says that he was going to send Kal-El to a planet that had a young star. That is the key to everything. So throw this up on the screen real quick. It's a, spect a spectrum, whatever, that's showing the difference between energies. So as you see, we're going about to where it shows where the star is, where visible light comes in around infrared, visible light, and ultraviolet light. That statement he made is very important because the thing that uh, super red super giants don't produce that young stars do is ultraviolet light that comes from young stars and reason because a red super giant they're normally cooler stars at the relative cool of 5,000 celsius versus a younger star about 10,000 celsius our star falls in the middle but we all know especially if you love science that in reality there are billions of galaxies out there and in billions of galaxies that have billions of stars, if not tens of billions of stars. So Jor-El could have sent him anywhere, could have found another galaxy that had life, that had a star that's similar to ours or even younger that's producing more ultraviolet radiation. And that's the key. Our sun produces more ultraviolet radiation. Now we're talking about suns. So you know what that means? Basically, all Kryptonians are plants. Yep. You heard this size. That had to be. The, but reality, the whole polar synthesis is not as clear cut as they like to say where blah, blah, blah. You, you know, plants to take on energy in photosynthesis. It's not as clear cut in terms of how Kryptonians get theirs, which they say is indefinite and the like. That's doesn't really make sense. And then when you break it down in terms of how cells store, I'm not about to do your biology homework. You can see it up on the screen. How cells store and get their energy. I think that it works a tad bit different from Kryptonians, and it does make sense. Just trust me on this. Just, you do your own research, but trust me on this. I think what actually happens is Kryptonians are exposed to solar radiation, but it's the ultraviolet light that they store within their cells, in their cells, you know, many times over. And then that gives an ability from the laser vision, the uh, X ray vision, the super speed. The flight, of course, has got to be some type of propulsion for this to actually work. But I think we're going to not go too in depth of everything. 
we'll leave that for Kyle Hill and for um, Matt Pat to go and investigate, yada, yada, yada. But it does make sense strengthening their muscles, strengthening their bones because of solar radiation. We're going to get to the faults in that. But however, I know I'm catching a lot of heat of this. The new 52 did do something right because the science adds up because if it was stored in the cells, he would have a superpower that should allow him to expend all of his power at one single time. And it would be nearly an, an explosion flat out. And that's what a new 52 actually got. So it does add up with all the powers he's gotten. At least in this way, except there's one power that doesn't add up. I've always hated it. I've never liked it. And that would be that stupid fucking super breath. Here's the reason. Everything adds up and then explain, except for the super breath. It, the power is there, but it doesn't explain the area of effect. Now, to get into the other cat, everybody's going to wonder how about his weaknesses, how the solar, you know, getting hit by red star or uh, uh, kryptonite work. Well. Again, writers do whatever they want, but it would mean that the moment that he's exposed to red solar radiation or kryptonite, his cells go overdrive and expend all the energy at one point, just gets dump all the energy out. And that's why he gets so weak, you know, writers and make up the here's the problem with that. What you would end up getting is the following. Bam. Yes. Yeah, so he would explode. It, it would be a nuclear explosion if it's expending it that fast that he gets that weak, which means the justice really all Joker really had to do was throw some kryptonite, some red solar radiation his way. He would have destroyed all of Metropolis. Now let's get to another elephant in the room and let's talk about the death of Superman. So to give a little bit of background, Superman and uh, there's Doomsday and Superman meets and Doomsday is also Kryptonian. And they went back and forth, the death of Superman. He comes out of nowhere. They fought and they fight, they fight. Pretty much they fight to a stalemate. They all have the same powers. And when I was doing the research and thinking about this, it actually, make about things aside from the, from the extreme camp, I don't think anything should have played out the way it does because ultraviolet radiation still can be stopped by uh, sunscreen, hats, clothes, yada, yada, yada. And Doomsday was inside the Earth, if you remember the comics. So in reality, when you think about it, Superman from uh, Injustice, it should have played out that way in reality, where he should have just one shot at Doomsday for the most part and be on his way. But there are three things to keep in mind that actually would work and keep everything working. First is the surface area. Doomsday is far bigger than uh, Superman. So his body would absorb radiation, uh, a lot more radiation than what Superman will be able to soar, especially their ultraviolet radiation. So then it still should kind of play out towards Superman's advantage, except let's go back to that chart a little bit that we were talking a bit ago, because there was another portion of that. I'm going to throw it up on the screen. There's another portion you might not have see if you, you see radiation, but it doesn't just stop. A bit of lag here, but we're going to keep it going. It has two more types of radiation that have shorter wavelengths, that being it. X-rays and gamma rays. And so we'll have to go back with history to explain why all of this does make sense. So 1940s, World War II, United States develops the uh, the nuclear bomb. They don't end World War II. They actually just really end World War II in the Pacific, in the Pacific theater, not the specific theater. I caught myself. Ha ha. So they drop these bombs. They realize, hey, the Germans were very close to developing their own bomb. Maybe we need to start monitoring and see if anybody else developing their own bomb and impede that before anything goes down. So they decide we're going to build these detectors. We're going to throw them out in the space. We're going to have some on ground and we're going to monitor and see if we can find out who's doing nuclear tests. They throw their satellites up and the moment they start pointing, they're getting hits all over the place. And then like, who's doing what? Is everybody doing something? And then they realize. It's not coming from the earth. The gamma ray readings they're getting are coming from outer space. Pulsars, quasars, black holes, other stars, you name it, just gamma rays exploding all over the place. They're realizing, hey, we weren't the first. And that's the second portion of it. Gamma rays were all out of space. Now, if you remember, uh, it, Doomsday, whatever, just shortened everything. He 
got sent from outer space, blah, blah, blah. 250,000 years ago, everything happened. Sent out of space multiple times. He could have been collecting gamma rays, which have a shorter wavelength and more powerful than ultraviolet light. And so when he got sent into the, the Earth, he just sitting there for how many thousands of years, just biding his time. And so his energy is slowly zapping. Meanwhile, Superman now having more power. By the time they finally do meet, everything kind of lines up. And so that, yeah, they should have been, you know, around about being even in terms of power. Doesn't explain why Doomsday didn't have the ability to fly, but it does explain why he did have almost all the other abilities. That also does bring up another caveat that everybody's going to at me at this, but tell the truth. That means that Supergirl is stronger than Superman. Be, hate me, but we're going to talk about we're going to talk about the original story, not the original storyline, but the one where they say that she got sent from Krypton, from Krypton at the exact same time as Superman. Because she got sent from Krypton at the exact same time as Superman, Superman arrives earlier as a baby. Meanwhile, uh, Kara Zor-El, she has a bigger surface area. She's out in space hitting more gamma rays. So, yeah, by the time she does get in the, in the Earth, she is definitively stronger than Superman with the things that we've said. I don't care about anything else. We're just talking about this. With that, that should be about how Kryptonian powers actually work. And I'm going to leave you with this. This is the most, the most kawaii picture I have ever seen in my life. All my sources, I can't remember why I got all my sources there everywhere. You can do your research about the blah, blah, about all of the scientific stuff I've talked about. It's very, it's very easy to find. This picture was done by Leader Vladimir. I was going to do a Russian accent, but my Russian accent sucks. But this is the best picture I could end this off with. Crypto, Karazor, L, Superboy, both Superboys, and Superman. This is an anime. We need to make it happen. DC, make this happen. I need this in my life. With that said, again, this is what I think how Kryptonian powers actually work. But we're going to cut off here. It's been your boy, Bob Scope. Like, share, subscribe, and keep it gaming, YouTube.